Hmm. Hello, good afternoon. I Today is September 1st, 2014, and I want to make a little video about adding vectors. So what I'm going to imagine is that I have two or more vectors defined not by uh, their orthogonal components, but just by their magnitude and angular direction. Okay, so let's say that this one is going what we'll do is we'll define a horizontal direction like this, and we'll say this one's probably about 60 degrees, and this one is somewhere over 90 degrees, maybe uh, maybe uh, 100, 100 degrees. And also we'll say this one is length 5, and this one is length 2. So what we're going to do is see the resultant vector, which should be pointed right here. Now, it doesn't matter which order I do these two vectors, because um, if I go this one first and then this one, it's the same as if I did the second one first and then the first one. So you can make a little parallelogram there. Okay, now I've readjusted the screen, so hopefully everything will stay visible as I work. I'm going to begin by creating two lists. These lists will be R and theta. and R, the R values will be 5 and 2, and the theta values will be 60 and, 60 and 100. Those are our radiuses and angles. Then what I'm going to do is come over here and find out what X and Y are. And so X is going to be 5 times cosine of 60. And that comes out to be negative 4.76. Y is going to be uh, 5 times sine of 60. And that comes out to be negative 1.54. However, I imagine I just made a mistake because Yes, because this thing goes back to radians every time I start it. So I'm going to start over on that, second quit, and then uh, 5 cosine 60 turns out to be 2.5. So this is 2.5, and y is 5 sine 60, and it turns out to be 4.33. I just usually use three significant figures. When in doubt, just use three significant figures. Um, x for the r, or x for the second vector, is going to be 2 cosine 100, which gives us negative 0.3, about negative 0.347, negative 0.347. Seven, while 2 times sine of 60 is 1.73, or I'm sorry, it should have been 100. So second enter pulls that back, 100, and comes out to be 1.969. Okay, so that's a 1, oh, where'd my pencil go? Okay, 1.96, 1 1.97 would be three significant digits. Okay, uh, my uh, smooth draw has been acting up lately. But anyway, if I want the total, what's, what is this total here? Well, then I have to add these two things together. 2.5 minus 0.347. And, whoops, I missed a decimal place there. Second, insert, and put a point, then enter, 2.153, 2 2.153, of course. And then in the Y position, I'll be taking 4.33 uh, uh, plus... 1.97 and 
and that gives us 6.3. Now uh, look at the diagram and see if that looks about right. Oops, of course. Does it seem like it goes about 2.153 over and about 6.3 up? I would say it's uh, close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. All right, so now what if I wanted to find out what theta and r was for that final vector? I will want to do this. I'm going to be taking uh, theta is the inverse tangent of y over x, 6.3 over 2.153. Stupid, stupid thing. Ugh. Okay, 6.3. I can't draw a dot because uh, somewhere I reinstalled the software for this thing and it decided to screw it up. Sorry. Okay, inverse tangent uh, 6.13. Uh, clear. Second tangent 6.13 divided by 2.15 and I think that might just be a 6.3 there delete okay and that came out to be 71.71.15 degrees so I'll put that right here 71.2 degrees Okay, and then for the r, it's going to be square root of x squared plus y squared. So that is going to be 2.153 squared plus 6.3 squared. And then I'm going to take the sec square root of that, which means square root of the answer of my last one and that comes out to be 6.66. Now take advantages take advantage of some uh, capabilities of this calculator. I'm going to go into stat edit. I'm going to enter these numbers 5 and 2 into list 1 and then I'm going to enter the numbers 60 and 100 into list 2. Into list 3 I'm going to go up there to where the list is and say L1 times the cosine of L2. And that automatically generated for me the numbers 2.5 and negative 0.3473. Then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing with the sine. L2 or L1 times the sine of L2, parentheses, and that gives uh, 2.5, or 4.33 and 1.9696, which is the numbers that we got right there. So what will I do then? I'm going to try something. Um, all right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into the list functions, go into the operations, and find the one that says cumulative sum and the cumulative sum of L2, L3 is going to, should give us as the last item in there 2.152, 2.152 and the uh, second list ops cumulative sum of L4, second L4 gives us that uh, 6 6.299, which is this 6.3. All right. Better yet, let's do this. Cumulative sum L3, I'm going to store that in, uh, say, x. Where is x? Right there, x. And then cumulative sum of L4. Oh, this isn't working right. Let's see. Well, I'll finish what I started and then tell you why it's not working right. Alpha, where's the y? T 
uv w x y okay now uh, the problem is x and y are both lists instead of being um, uh, numbers okay I know how to get to the last item in the list now okay first let me show you that you can get to list x by hitting second list and then I have the names of the list that I put in there x um, parentheses 2 because it's the second item in the list and we're gonna store that we're gonna store this in X because I already know it's there and then I'm gonna do second uh, list Y because there's a list Y parentheses 2 and I'm gonna store that in uh, alpha where is it again V W X Y there it is and I'm going to put that in list 2. All right, now I'm going to do, to find out the angle, I'm going to do inverse tangent of y over x, alpha y divided by alpha x. Those are the same variable, whichever one I do there. 71.1 degrees. So it came out just a little bit different, 71.1, uh, because I didn't do any rounding. And then square root, second square root, of x squared plus alpha y squared parentheses comes out to be 6.6 .6, still 6.66 .6. let's do one more example um, so that we can uh, kind of do this without actually using that stat edit because uh, not everybody has access to that. So um, I'm going to do it with just the lists. And we're going to put in an R list, um, 5, 7, 9. And I'm using the uh, curly brackets here. And I'm going to store that in, say, alpha R, STPQR. So those will be my radiuses. And then I'm going to do stat uh, no I'm not gonna do stat I'm gonna do the other list for uh, 20 comma 30 comma 40 um, whoops not that bracket second that bracket and I'm going to store that in we'll call it T for theta because there is no theta of course and then I'm going to say I'm going to do let's see it's under list list names it's gonna be R times cosine of list T and we're gonna store that into uh, we'll store that into X store uh, X, whoops, delete, delete, and X. We'll do, and then we'll do, um, we'll store the list R sine T, R sine T, we're going to store in another one, uh, alpha, no, not alpha, second list R times the sine of second list of t and that is going to go st get stored in alpha y w x y and then we can actually view these if we wanted and uh, put them in the list so y would be 1.71 five for this one and five point seven nine five point seven nine and um, let's see I kind of missed my chance to get that one but I could go ahead and look at it by doing second list what is it X I wanted to look at three and we can look at that four point seven um, 6.1 and um, 
And then what I want to do is get the uh, sum of these. So I'm going to go second list operations and find cumulative sum of uh, the x list. So it's going to be uh, second list x, which is the third one on there, parentheses. And just for the sake of, well, first let's do that. So we got the list. I'm going to try something different though. Second, enter, and I'm going to put parentheses 3 because it's the third item in the cumulative sum list that I want. Uh, no, that didn't work. So I'm going to have to put it in. Um, so I don't know why it didn't do anything there. Oh, because it multiplied it by 3. It it just multiplied the, the list by 3. So we don't want to do that. We want to, you know what? If I cursor over one more over here, there's a sum. I don't have to do cumulative sum at all. So let's do sum of second uh, li list x. See what comes out of that. Aha! That's much better. Okay, now I can store that, store that in alpha x. And notice alpha x and list x are not the same variable. So anyway, that gets put here, 17.6. And then if we go another one, we're going to go second, list, go over here to math operations, sum. And then we'll be doing the sum of list, whoops, wrong one, second list, second list. Uh, delete, clear, second list of y, of y, and we're going to be storing that in alpha y, and then we'll have our 10.99, which is basically 11.0. Now I can find our r is going to be second square root of x squared alpha x squared plus alpha y squared parentheses and that's 20.8 and our theta is going to be tangent no inverse tangent inverse tangent of alpha y divided by alpha x parentheses. That came out to be 31.9 degrees. So, and that, since this is in the first quadrant, since this is in the first quadrant, that one's okay. If it were in the second or third quadrant, then we'd have to add 180 to it. But, now what would happen if you imagined um, adding these together? Uh, if we had a one that was going 20 degrees at 5 and then 30 degrees, just that's just a little bit up. You barely even see the 30 degrees at um, 7 and then 40 degrees at 9. 40 degrees. That is almost a straight line. So you can imagine that 5 plus 7 plus 9 is what? It's a 21. So this 20.8 is almost, is that distance there, and it's almost a straight line, which would give you 21. But uh, the angle here is a little bit, is in between the 20 degree angle and the 40 degree angle. It's 31.9 degrees. Closest to the 30 degree angle, but the 40 degree angle has a little bit more uh, contribution to it. The 20 degree angle has a little bit less, so that's why it's a little bit more than 30 degrees. So I would say that is a reasonable answer for this question.